video, I'm going to be sharing my step-by-step -step foolproof tips for what you actually need to do to get rid of any ingrown hairs, guaranteed. Just a couple of things before I jump to today's video. One, I've got timestamps and links to any specific products down in the description. And two, if you like this sort of video, then why not consider liking this video and subscribing? That's it. That's it. Let's just get on to today's video. Everybody knows that ingrown hairs are a very common occurrence resulting from shaving. If you shave, wax, thread, tweeze, anything that involves removal of hair, that can potentially cause ingrown hairs. So now we're on to the active part of the video, which talks about what you actually need to do should you have an ingrown hair. That's looking at you saying, what are you gonna do about me? I'm here to stay. Well now, if you watch this video, you'll know exactly what you need to do. So the first thing is don't do anything. Crickets. What the hell am I meaning? What am I talking about? Don't do anything. Yes, I mean it. When the skin is red, it's itchy, it's irritating, we have a tendency to overdo things. We start poking at it, we start scratching it, we start picking at it, we start fiddling with it. Our hands can harbor bacteria, even with all the hand washing that we do. So by poking, scratching, itching, picking, we're introducing infection to the skin. So rather than making things better, it can actually make things worse. The best thing, at least right now, is to avoid picking at it. Let it be, let it be. Step two is that once you've done step one, which is to not do anything, is now to have a look at the area and check what can you actually see. The reason why I'm asking you to have a closer look is to check for certain additional things. Can you see the hair follicle that's actually trapped underneath the skin? Does it look like you can grab it and release it? Can you see signs of infection? Is there pus? Any of these things you need to take stock of and appraise before jumping in and doing the most. So once you've done step one and two, the next thing is now you can actually start doing something. But when it comes to treating razor bumps, ingrown hairs, and anything to do with hair removal, the two main things are exfoliation and moisturization. Those things are like, why can't I control my hands? But those things are like this. That is your weapon to get rid of this ingrown hair. So how do you exfoliate? Simply by using those products that I mentioned earlier. They work, they work. So pick one, anyone that you like, anyone that sounds good to you, just pick one from the list. What you then need to do is start a regime. The same way you start an exercise regime, now we're doing a get rid of ingrown hair regime. And your regime will be twice a day. Best timed with when you have a shower in the mornings or evenings, and then the other times where you don't shower, or if you do shower, you do it then. But if you don't shower, you just wash and cleanse. I don't know why I'm getting a tongue twisted talking about morning and evening, but you just get what I'm trying to say, which is twice a day. What you would do each time is you cleanse your skin and I would recommend to use a gentle cleanser. Don't be aggressive with scrubbing. Do not use loofahs. Do not use scrubs. St. Ives apricot scrub is banned. Do not touch that okay? That needs to go in the bin. So you just cleanse and rinse dry. Once the skin is dry, you get your product and you apply it to a cotton wool pad. Once you've soaked the cotton wool pad with your product, you then apply that cotton wool pad to the areas. You can then follow through with a really good emollient moisturizer. And there's a good one by Cetruben that's used for other things like eczema, dermatitis, other skin conditions. Right now, you have to remember that your skin is so sore, it's inflamed, it's angry. It's basically like a teenager that's just like, oh, you know, pissed off because you've gone through and you've just attacked it with shaving blades, razor blades, waxing, whatever. And what's the best way to keep a teenager calm? You kind of, you know, give him a bit of there, there, you know, you're okay. Do you even care that I am not feeling well? Of course I do. There. you're good blah 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 
whatever you do with your teenagers if you have any that's the same approach so after you've attacked it other things before the moisturizer is where you're calming the skin down. The good thing is that by doing this, you can often see results within 24 hours. You can see the ingrown hair and the razor bumps start to kind of slowly shrink and fade. And just like a volcano is kind of calming down. Although depending on how severe it is, it can take a couple of days up to a week for things to kind of die down. But it's worth persevering with those treatments twice a day if you can. If you have sensitive skin or you find that it's a bit too much too quickly you might just want to start once a day or once every other day but making sure to keep your skin moisturized the other thing i would suggest to do whilst you've got ingrown hairs or razor bumps is to wear loose clothing you may even need to go commando yeah i said it yes i said what i said but who's gonna know Who's gonna know? Just wear a long maxi dress or a skirt, something that's quite loose, that's not gonna rub or chafing because that's partly why you had this problem to begin with. So you need to let the skin breathe. What else was I going to say? Oh yeah, if you want to, as an additional extra, you can also use a mild steroid cream. These are usually available over the counter in many countries. Steroids are amazing at treating inflammation. So you can also apply steroid cream, usually twice a day for up to seven days. Don't use it for any longer than a week. If you're finding that after a week of using steroid creams, your situation is not getting better, or in fact, it's getting worse, that is the point that you need to start calling your doctor and saying hello this is not getting better what am i supposed to do that's your basic let me get rid of my ingrown hair in a nutshell regime if we're going back to step one or step two and you have a look and you can actually see the hair it's kind of poking its little head it's saying hey look at me look at me or you can see it and it just you know just like free willy it just wants to be let loose you can actually let it loose you can set it free but with conditions okay you can't go digging blindly as in this is not pin a tail on the donkey kind of business we're not doing that and you have to be careful and gentle there is a specific technique of what you need to do and you can do this if you have tweezers or a safety pin once you sterilized your instruments is you can now use that to free up the hair and I will demonstrate and this is very high-tech what I'm about to do you're not ready for this level of high-tech graphics okay so I'm going to demonstrate how you free up the ingrown hair are you ready watch this so this is your skin and which okay this one okay let's use this little piggy so this is your skin this is what I mean by high tech and this little piggy represents the ingrown hair so what normally happens with ingrown hairs is that you can see the hair kind of looping and it's trapped so what you then do with your sterile tweezers or your sterile safety pin is you kind of lip you're looping the safety pin underneath the hair in this little hole here is where your tweezers should go with that tweezers you just try to flick up the hair that's it and you're flicking it up to release it do not pull the hair out do not start digging into the skin trying to prise it out if you're doing that you've already lost it's too late don't do that but what all you're doing is you're just trying to free up the hair that's just trapped just so it's released again if you pull it out by the root you're just going to repeat the cycle because what will happen is that a new hair will just come up in its place and get trapped under the skin so you're just trying to free up the hair so that it can go about its business and all that inflammation the redness around the hair follicle then starts to settle down once you've done that then you can go back to the exfoliation steps and the moisturization that i mentioned earlier and that's pretty much it but dr k what if none of this stuff works what if instead of my ingrowns and my razor bumps getting better the skin actually starts to get worse 
and the redness starts to get worse and you have a swelling that's starting to get bigger and bigger and I can actually see that it's getting more painful red and I can even see areas of yellow and pus what do I do then that my friend is when I would say you need to start seeing or speaking to your doctor because it's likely that an abscess might start to form Usually ingrown hairs are quite minor and they tend to go away within seven to 10 days. But in some rare circumstances, an infection can then start to settle in. This is more likely to happen if you didn't listen to my step one advice and instead of being hands off, you kind of got all in the mix, started twinkering and doing things. But it can happen anyway, just because. If it does, you may need to have antibiotics to treat the infection and these antibiotics are usually given orally antibiotics though don't, don't work like that they normally have to be absorbed into the body and start to work on the infection and that process can take about 24 to 48 hours so during that time just apply warm compresses take any painkillers if you need to. You can still use steroid creams like I mentioned earlier. You're playing a waiting game over that 24, 40 hours to see if the antibiotics work. In most cases they do and that's all that's needed. But some people and some types of infections don't respond so quickly to the antibiotics. And you'll see that right in front of your very eyes because the infection gets bigger and the abscess gets bigger and the swelling and the pain gets bigger. If it starts to get big enough, you can actually start to feel unwell systemically. Some people will start to feel feverish. You might even have temperature, depending on how big the abscess is. If that happens, you again need to be dialing 0800, where's my doctor? You may even, in extreme circumstances, need to take yourself to your nearest accident and emergency or your nearest emergency room, or your nearest urgent care center, or your nearest minor injuries walking center, or whatever it is. You just need to see a doctor to have prompt treatment. What that treatment may involve is what's called an incision and drainage. And that's the process where a doctor goes in and makes a small cut into the abscess. And yes, it does sound as gross as it seems. So they make a small cut and just the same way, you know, you kind of puncture into a balloon and all that air is released. That's the same rationale. So we make a hole so that all that pus, all that gunk, all that kind of mushy stuff starts to come out. And that makes us happy as doctors. We like to see gross stuff come out because Better out than in. Better out than in, I always say. <laughs> so that's normally happens in extreme circumstances if your infection doesn't get better. But you can improve your chances of not getting to that level if you follow the advice that I gave you. Anyway, guys. I am done for today. If you haven't already and you found this video beneficial, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. I'll be back same time next week on Sunday. I'll see you then. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.